Greetings, I'm Ginger Chang. Welcome to US TG360. Today we continue our coverage on the great work TG San Francisco volunteers have been doing for the low-income families at Gordon J. Law Elementary School. A majority of the families live in single-room occupancy hotels or SROs in San Francisco's Chinatown. The dwellings are a rich part of the city's history and trace their beginnings to the mid-19th century. The SROs were resided by low-wage workers, transient laborers, and immigrants because the housing was affordable. These days, San Francisco still has hundreds of SRO hotels that home up to 5% of the city, and one predominant group are the Chinese immigrant population. In a few moments, you will meet Mrs. She, who was kind enough to show us her living quarters. She told us that compared to other tenants, she's fortunate because normally a family of four would be sharing the 60 square feet of space she lives in. Since having just come from China, they cannot afford the rent. As a last resort, in Chinatown, they jammed themselves into a makeshift partition, loose rooms, which are tiny with shared bathroom and kitchen facilities. Here are the shared bathroom and kitchen. The cooking walks down below are individual belongings. When cooking soups, they usually tie the lid up to prevent others from dumping something in. Measuring 80 square feet approximately, each partition accommodates only one single bed in size, financially permitting. A family of four would need an 80 square feet one, meaning four persons for one room. A curtain is hung by the entrance of each partition. A closed door would mean no one is inside. Usually, a family of four sleeps on one bunk bed, with kids on top and parents to the bottom. This partition is the largest in size for the entire building. Many partitions accommodate barely one bed behind the opening door. For a tiny partition at this time of the year, the rate is between $500 and $600 a month. Usually, young immigrant couples between the ages of 30 and 40 would bring their children to settle here. The children would move out after graduating from college, with the elderly remaining unwilling to move out. This is why certain seniors 60 to 70 years old in age have been living here for 20 or 30 years. When kids come home from school, they remain their 20 square foot partition. They have no space to walk around, only to hang on the corridor. Space is very limited. Uh, 
，然后下课了再回家。When they come home, they must do their homework on the dining table because they have no desk. Then late at night, the parents come home to cook, and the kids eat followed by sleep. This is their way of life. 都是这样子生活了。所以叫他去学校去拿了。OK， 是学校说这些 family 是可能有。你同学校讲就得噶啦，同学校讲话你想攞物，咁就可以攞到噶啦。你要同佢讲咯。虽然啊，上面一个房。Although the building up there houses 48 families, not 48 people, tenants arrange among themselves for shower taking and cooking without collision in the schedule. 去洗澡啦，去啊煮饭啦，不会挤在一个同一个时间。初初嚟到咧，即係地方細啊，啊，大家逼住一齊啊，新移民啊，咁啊，人人都唔係幾懂啊，咁咪做啲做啲讀下書啊，啊，又聽下，即係講下，咁啊，就學到好多嘢咯，啊，啊，咁啊，而家就。即係大家好好啊！我有時啲朋友啊，咁啊佢租租喺唐人房咧，嗰啲地方好細一個房仔，咁啊佢啊四四個人住，兩個細路仔啊兩個，就擺個牀一個櫃，行都冇冇地方行啊！所以而家比起咧，自己真係好幸福嘅，好幸運啊！啊！这个手法我们做可能有点难，但它是实际上一个简单的方法，让我们做分配。即使外国人可能有困难理解我们的流程。Okay, so we start at 10. At 10, when the parents arrive, they take a number and wait until the distribution begins. Okay, so we start at 10. At 10, when the parents arrive, they take a number and wait until the distribution begins. 刚刚 the numbers that were made just a short while ago were then distributed. We then marked down which numbers had already been taken. The next step is registration. We purchase food from the food bank, so it's important that we collect the parents' signatures in order to ensure that the food is distributed fairly and accurately. At one o'clock, another group collects the number cards that we distributed earlier. Because we need to take back all the numbers that we distributed, this is the job of the collection group. The food is delivered by the food bank around noon. When we receive the food, we need to plan where we put everything. That way, we know how much to distribute to the parents. In addition, there is a group of volunteers that handle food distribution at the Gordon Lau Elementary School. The 20 members in that school reach out to their volunteers through phone calls. New 
NewsHour on PBS recently reported that the child poverty rate in the U.S. rose 20% from 2000 to 2009 due to the recession. This means that there are 31 million children living with one unemployed adult at home. Fortunately, the San Francisco Food Bank saw that there was a great need to help the students from low-income families at Gordon Lau Elementary School and considered that location to be eligible to receive food assistance. The food bank later on entrusted Tsuji volunteers to carry out their initiative after seeing the foundation's success at another local elementary school. The first food distribution took place on January 22nd in 2008. Furthermore, thanks to the selfless dedication, integrity, and close teamwork of the Tsuji volunteers, some of the aid recipients have even expressed their desire to reciprocate with the same love. So there are different groups of number tag creation, registration, number tag collection, food distribution, and volunteer coordination. This is five groups. We make sure that we follow the schedule. It has to be as it says on this form. We had to follow the schedule on this food pantry form. So because they come on time, maybe that's 800 family for one time period. So it's easy for us and easy for us to control control them because most of them are, you know, like grandma, grandpa, you know, they are they, they, they are pretty, you know, old. So we don't want anything to be happen. And a lot of the parents are still learning how to uh, assimilate, how to live in the United States. Things that they were used to doing in, say, Hong Kong or China or what have you. It's a different system over here. So there are some parents standing over there. They want to see if they have any leftover food, so they line up. It's not that they don't want to go home, they're just waiting to see if there's any food left over. Thank you for everything. We are four in the family. Four members of the family. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and working here is real rewarding because I know that um, I'm helping the community. In terms of uh, you distributing the, the food, which is essential thing for people. So this, you get the immediate gratification when you pass out the food to them every week. In terms of work, I volunteer here almost every week. Young, strong male volunteers in particular are needed. That's the way it is here. Now, nowadays, they pretty much like, you know, respect us a lot. Even though when we finish our, our job here or our, our service here, we walk down to Chinatown, they said, oh, Tsuji sister, Tsuji sister. They will recognize us as a, you know, Tsuji volunteer, Tsuji sister. They will respect us. Even, you know, the other side will say, oh, sister, sister, how are you? Where are you going? You know, yeah. But it's not easy. It takes time to, uh, to teach them how to respect uh, people. There are a lot of uh, Tsuji sisters uh, are very proper. They don't show their emotions, uh, especially Sister Teresa is always very strict 
and very punctual, very, you know, the, uh, to the point, and people call her ice lady. To teach them, at least I try my best to teach them. They are who they are. When they fight, we have to deal with their problems. Of course, I was just yelled at because I told him that he had already collected his food. Two people from the same family came to pick up food. Another sister told me that they were from the same family and not to give food to both. He yelled, I don't even need your stuff. That began an argument. The old man in the back just misunderstood. When things like this happen, we just explain to him as patiently as we can. He didn't understand, but that's the best we can do. Problems like these are all just misunderstandings. He angrily said he didn't want our food, even if it was free. This kind of problem has happened before because different people have different values. Some people have wanted more and some have been picky about what they receive. Honestly speaking, it does make things difficult for the volunteers. However, we remain sincere in dealing with them. Even though at the beginning, probably they don't know uh, what is the meaning of great love. But I'm sure, you know, uh, according to what they see us every Monday, we actually we only have breakfast and then we don't have lunch, but we're still working so hard to have them because they are all new immigrants. Yeah? They, they, they don't know. They, I think this will uh, impress them you know, a lot. So um, from now on, I think they... So you know, the, through us you know, servicing with the community, working with kids, I think that actually uh, bring up uh, her own compassion. To give is to resist. Similar, just exactly the same as Master Genius, you know philosophy, right? So <laughs> this is how, you know, uh, um, keep me carry out Suji's warranty all the time. She would do every single Suji task as if she was executing a task, not just uh, servicing uh, something with compassion in mind. But I think that uh, through Happy Campus uh, serving in, uh, in Golden Jilao, that, that uh, you know, so her door is open and the ice is melting and then the temperature is uh, you know, so coming up to her. I think that's really good. I'm so glad. According to the national education system, ethnic minority students comprise nearly 40% of the student population in the nation's schools, and that figure will increase to 50% over the next 20 years. The Center for American Progress, a think tank, also reported in their study on the rate of assimilation in America today that children of immigrants do achieve high levels of educational attainment and obtain higher salary jobs than their parents. Therefore, it's important that no child is left behind, and one way of preventing this is minority community outreach, which is exactly what Tsiji volunteers will continue to do for the students and their families at Gordon Law Elementary School. In our next segment for Prince, we introduce you to Martin Guo. 
He is a Tiji volunteer that has been to 11 countries for Tiji's international disaster relief missions. Before Martin came to the U.S. to take over the family business, he was a young college graduate who was enjoying a free-spirited life. However, he soon realized the challenges in adjusting to life in America. His family business didn't do well and Martin lost everything in a blink of an eye. Yet, through that experience of feeling helplessness, Martin was able to gain the wisdom to motivate him to vow that he will never let his family suffer financially again. I came to this country back to 1980. You know, just like all the immigrants, you come here to pursue your dream of America. And I didn't do it too well. 1985, my two years old daughter, Annie, had an emergency, so I needed to send her to the ER. I was only making like less than $1,000 a month, so I definitely was a low income, so I, I couldn't afford the medical bill. I was embarrassed as a man, as a father. I was covered by welfare. I want to help people. So since that day, I want to make money. I want to be on top of the world. I want to be successful. The sounds come out from time to time and just disappear. Well, I respond with my pocket to help people, but not with my life. And then till 2003, I got a call. They, they need some volunteers to San Diego wildfire. So I went. One particular uh, victim, I remember his name is Richard, and he showed me, you can tell, it's million dollar deluxe house. Overnight, he lost everything, he had nothing. I saw the volunteers holding with her both hands to hand over a check for $500. I saw Richard cry, saying he will pay back to us. The volunteer just very kind to say, you don't have to pay back, pay forward. That took my heart for that moment. Through that serving, then you really know that kind of a joy and that kind of a value and that kind of a life. Once Master has told me, if you had enough for your life expenses, what are you waiting for? Do it. Another story that Martin shared with us was that during the financial low point in his life, his daughter Annie had wanted to go to McDonald's. Martin was mortified that he couldn't afford to spend the $5 on the meal for his daughter. But it turned out that Annie had just wanted to go to the playground there. Martin plans to retire and commit full time as a Tiji volunteer. Even though he spends 80% of his time on Tiji's goodwill missions, his wish is to devote even more time to furthering Master Deng Yin's missions because there is still so much suffering out there in the world today. Also, our team would like to thank him because this lovely and eccentric red sofa was a generous gift from him. I am Ginger Chang and I'll see you next week.